Snurra. Se, snurra. <laughs> snurra is so big now. I'm going to talk about my cat, no. So, all the games that I've played recently on my Nintendo Switch, my last video was the PlayStation 5, and now we're over to the Switch. I'm also playing on the Switch. <laughs> and I still recommend the grips, link down below, and I have a discount code. So I'm here with my N64 cup. Mm. And let's start off with <laughs> Dragon Quest Treasures. Remember when I said, Snurra. Remember when I said that it was a comfortable, boring game? I still stand by that, actually, but I did make a few other notes ah, in my excellent book. Review code provided. Thank you. Okay, I'm getting straight to the point. If this game, Dragon Quest Treasures, is ever at more than 30% off on a sale, then I'm saying that it is worth it. The full price? No. So what I mean by comfortable, boring is that it is not a big challenge. You know what you're doing. You can absolutely mindlessly play this game. You don't really have to pay attention. You just go and do the same things. This is the sort of game that you can chill on your couch with your Switch in handheld and have some YouTube and Netflix on in the background and actually multitask this game. It's no deep and profound storyline. You have this hub base and you take this train out to these floating islands. I think there are like six and you collect the treasures and here's what I like to do. Uncovering them map as I go. So I'm trying to uncover the maps and you're just going to these exclamation marks or question marks to the quest areas and you do the quests and it's pretty light and easy. Easy to understand and it's a comfortable game in this way. I know exactly what I'm doing. Now you have recruitable monsters in this game. They are coming up to you in the base asking to join your party and then you can have them join. Now, when you are venturing out on these islands for your treasure hunt, you can bring with you three monsters. They have abilities like jump high, glide in the air, crawl under things. So sometimes you need to bring with you and know in advance what kind of monster ability that you think you're gonna need in this specific island that you're going to. You can find some chests with some items and then you find a lot of treasures down in the ground and then you bring them back home to your base and your base value goes up. It's a routine, it's a rhythm, it's comfortable, but it's also sort of boring. In your base you can display some of your favorite treasures that you found. You can check your catalog with all the treasures that you have found. You have a sort of dungeon area in the base. Pretty light combat -y stuff going on down there. And actually I think the base is very lackluster. When I first arrived at this base I thought that an I had heard that you could upgrade the base and I like that sort of concept in a game where you can upgrade your base and see it's, I don't know, upgraded state gradually. I was disappointed with this actually because the base is very bland and suddenly after a story sequence thing there's a lot of treasures around. It was just not as exciting as I've seen in other games. So the story is that you play as either this boy or this girl, they are siblings, and you can change between them any time in your playthrough. So what you need to take from this is that I stand by that. If you find this on sale, then it is worth it. Now the music, it is unbearable. <laughs> I know there are people out there that really enjoy Dragon Quest music, but I am unfortunately not one of them. When I was showing this game off to some friends of mine, I felt embarrassed, not only by the music, but also by the performance of the game and the graphics. Because I take a lot of pride in showing a game to, for example, a non-gaming friend. Like, look at this game. And then I see the starters, and then I see the frame drops, and then I see that it looks like Sora it doesn't look like a new game and it definitely has performance issues and I think that the frame rate is at the embarrassing level especially when I'm trying to show this game off to some people and you know trying to say that this is fun the graphics are not the worst that I've seen in my life but it's just very noticeable 
with the performance. Now my two actual gripes with the game, actual gripes. Now the performance I don't mind if I'm playing alone and I don't feel like I have to show off to someone is that I think the digging animation is too slow. The actual treasure digging animation, you actually do this a lot and you have to see this a lot. And you have the loading screens. And there are some other decisions within the game that I don't really enjoy. It's that you have to have this chimera wing to travel with your treasures back to your base. Otherwise, if you retreat, you cannot take your treasures with you. And if you are deep within one of these islands, you have to go all the way back to the train station and take the train home if you want to bring the treasures home with you. I suppose it adds a layer of difficulty, I guess, but it's it's sort of an annoyance because we're so spoiled now with fast traveling everywhere. I mean, otherwise this game is a pretty okay game. I like to mindlessly play it. Leave a comment down below with what you think of Dragon Quest Treasures. If I were to rate it, give it a rating. It's like a six or seven out of 10. It's not a bad game, but it's, it's a game. And now we have the old Harvestella. You know what? I'm scrapping this review actually because I just fell out of the game. I was very into it, giving it my time and my passion and whatever. I enjoyed some parts of the game, but then I just fell out of it. I mean, holidays came around and I was like, I've moved on. But I did write my buy or not review. But I mean, like I, I wrote this like a month ago and I think I disagree with myself already. Uh, so that is maybe a scrapped video. I actually have a lot of scrapped videos. <laughs> uh, never mind that. The next game that I have played on my uh, Switch. Review called Provided. Lunistice. Lunis. Lunistis. It is a tiny 3D platformer at only $5 on the PC and the Switch. It is an indie game and I think it is somewhat worth checking out since it's only $5. The graphics are very PlayStation 1 era, retro inspired, which really spoke to me for some reason. And I love the colors and the level variations are good. It's not always an easy game. It's a rather hard game. You will fall off platforms and you will die plenty of times, but there is a general amount of checkpoints with unlimited retries. So that's like a tiny 3D platformer. If you just want to have that 3D platformer fix, I know you enjoyed Smurfs, but this is a smaller one, a super small indie cute game, thought I would mention it. Um. And another game that I'm gonna mention, and this one I actually don't recommend. So I'm also including games that I don't recommend. Now, Bear and Breakfast, it is a management adventure game where you play as a bear trying to do bed and breakfast business in the woods. This is a game that I was originally interested in. I have covered it before on my channel, actually, because I like games that are like this, but this one I didn't like. So I'm just giving you a heads up. I just very soon realized that I wasn't interested in it. After like being frustrated, too much with the controls on the Switch. They are terrible. They're absolutely horrendous. I don't get the controls. I heard it is easier to play on the PC. I'm just mentioning it. Now when I open my Switch, I have started Demon Gaze Extra. My first impression, it is not as good as Mary Skelter. I still stand by Mary Skelter being the best first-person dungeon crawler, grid-based, uncovering the map sort of game, which I do enjoy. Mary Skelter is just way better than Demon Gaze Extra. Because of the movement within a game like this, your walking speed is terrible, very slow. The story does not interest me at all. I thought the graphics were cute, they kinda are, but it is the gameplay that is holding me back and that is the movement within the dungeons and in a first person dungeon crawler, your movement is essential for the entire game. And if you have ever played it, you will know exactly what I mean by that. Now Ko, the kangaroo, a game that was broken at launch, it's an older game ported to the Switch, Switch Up did an excellent review of it. Ko 
couple of reviews actually. And it's just something that I wanted to play coming off Smurfs. And it's a decent game, but not as good as Smurfs. The graphics are sort of blurry and it's the Switch. I'm just medium on this game. I don't really recommend it. Maybe if you have nothing better to play, I guess. Another game I'm just giving you a heads up on is Pumpkin Jack. Because I've been really into 3D platformers. I guess that is in the title of this video also. 3D platformers that I'm just looking into currently on the Switch. Pumpkin Jack looks good from the reviews and the trailers and all the things. But it hasn't hooked me. It's... Um, it's not a very good game. It's not a terrible game either, but it's just something that has not hooked me. You can take that any way you want. If a game doesn't hook me, then I'm gonna be honest here on my channel and say so, that it just didn't. And like I have always said, I'm always on the lookout for 3D platformers because it's a genre that I love. I love it. <laughs> but there are good ones and there are terrible ones out there. And maybe I should just pop Mario Odyssey back in, I guess, if I'm so much looking for a 3D platformer. But I feel like I did everything in that game, but I guess I could start over if I want to scratch that itch. That's pretty good. Also, the Switch has folders. Have I ever told? No, I haven't told you about this yet. I mean, I have put them into groups. Now I have the exclusive group, the favorite games group, the atelier group, physical, niche JRPG group, <laughs> look at this guys, farming games, and a group that I'm calling need to play more. Maybe this is content for another day, I guess. But these are the games that I feel like I need to play more. <laughs> Fun. That is what I've been playing recently on my Switch. Hope you enjoyed this video and hit like on my video, even though you are on the TV right now. Snorri says hi. He does. Thank you so much for watching everyone and I will see you later.